Praise God. Oh, praise the Lord. All right, you guys. So uh, many of you know uh, our next guest, and uh, she's been on the Truth and Liberty live cast. We've been greatly honored for that. Uh, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert represents the 3rd District of Colorado, and she is uh, the first mother, the youngest ever, and the first woman to represent that district. She was raised as a Democrat in a Democrat household on welfare, but dropped out of high school because she realized that she could provide better for her family than the government. Representative Bobert believes in empowering we the people and is a strong supporter of the sacred Second Amendment. Second Amendment. She's married to a natural gas drilling foreman and is the mother of four boys ages 8 through 16. That makes you a hero right there. The congresswoman and her family attend New Creation Church in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Let's all put our hands together and let Congresswoman Bobert know we're so thankful that she is here. Jesus, I can't even believe I'm standing on this stage in front of all of you where so many giants in the faith have stood and declared truth, have declared liberty, have declared freedom. Why do we love freedom so much? It's because it's ingrained in our beings as new creations in Christ. That is why we came to Jesus, because we were bound. We were not free, but Jesus paid the ultimate price to set us free for all of eternity. It is for freedom that we are set free. Jesus is the perfect example of freedom, and our founding fathers understood that. They understood that freedom comes with a cost that there are some things that you are going to have to lay aside, that you're going to have to sacrifice. Some losses may occur, whether that's with your time, your treasures, or even with life. Our founding fathers understood that, and they still made the declaration to create this nation, this exceptional country, that was made to glorify God Almighty. There are two nations in this world that have been created for that purpose. Israel, whom we bless. We stand with Israel, our best friend over in the Middle East and the United States of America. And I don't care what it looks like right now, the United States of America and the people here will glorify God. We will exalt Jesus as Lord. Glory to God. It is so refreshing to be with like-minded individuals today. I'm not, I'm not always in the presence of so many people who agree with what we live by on a daily basis, but that is why I'm here. I'm not here because I wanted to be something. I'm not here because I was an excellent speaker. I, I probably relate more with Moses when it comes to speaking publicly before I stepped into this grace. And that's what it is. It's not my ability. This is God's ability. This is God's empowerment. As you heard, I attend, uh, I'm a member of New Creation Church in Glenwood Springs, pastors Mark and Tasha Bentleff, incredible pastors, and I would not be where I am without them. I've been there for 11 years, and I've served in many areas of the church, from the nursery to the youth ministry, to the Garfield County Jail, ministering to women for several years, going into those jail cells cells, and personally introducing these women to the God who can turn their shame into glory, who could restore 
everything that has happened in their past, take all of the failures, all of their shortcomings, and lead and guide and launch them into a successful future. And I knew that he could do it because he had done that for me. He had done that for my family and for my friends. But when I was in the youth ministry group at New Creation Church, our youth pastor would often ask me to give the tithes and offerings. And I'd say, well, I'd really rather not, Pastor Jonathan, because then I have to speak on a microphone. And I really don't like that. And he said, yeah, you're going you're gonna to take this microphone and you're going you're gonna to give this tithes and offering message. I would shake. Talking to high schoolers, I would shake talking about the blessings of the Lord, just, just giving a piece of what you've obtained to God. And so when God called me to this, I thought, surely you're talking to the wrong daughter here. I argued with God for at least three days. And I was in my restaurant. I own Shooter's Grill in Rifle, Colorado. And <laughs> it's a fun place. I was in the front of my restaurant, and uh, we, we, we do a lot of politicking, not because we knew what we were doing, just because we wanted to, you know, gripe and, you know, have an opinion about things. <laughs> but we also do a lot of praying there. And I, I've, I've met so many people and encountered so many people that I would have never had the opportunity to pray with, to minister to, had God not put it on my heart to have a restaurant. People from all over the world come to Rifle, Colorado, they think they're coming to see some girls with guns and get a hamburger, but they're coming to experience the life of God. They're not just getting filled up in the natural, but they are getting filled up supernaturally. And so I was in front of my restaurant right by the front door and I was walking back and forth and I was praying. I know I wasn't, I was arguing. I was arguing with God. <laughs> some people call that praying. Uh, and I'm like, God, you're wrong. I, I, and I, I stopped and I said, God, this is too big. It's too much. I'm not qualified. And frankly, it's too haste. I thought I'd use a fancy word that I don't usually use since I was talking to God. He arrested my spirit and he said, I created you with spontaneity. So when I say go, you go. Now, I have always seen that as a weakness. I've always seen that as a weakness. God, why can't I just make a plan? Why can't I make a schedule and stick to it? Why do I get these crazy ideas and say, yeah, I'm gonna open a restaurant. Yeah, I've had three kids, let's have another one. <laughs> why not? Sure, let's just give a car away. I just all these like weird, crazy, sporadic things. And I, I've always seen it as a weakness, I, I, I want to be organized. I want to plan things. I want, I want to have a vision and I want to walk that out and I want to know every step of it. Well, faith doesn't give you the whole picture. God doesn't tell you every step along the way. He says, trust me. He gives you a lamp to illuminate your path and that lamp is at your feet so you could see the next step, one step at a time knowing that you have to trust him for what's ahead of you. And so when God said that to me, I said, man, you know, maybe I'm not using the gifts and callings that God has given me appropriate all the time, but to hear God say he created me that way for his purpose, I had to answer the call. I had to say, yes, God, I'll do it. I don't, I'm not concerned about my education and the fact that I have a GED. Actually, I didn't even have it then. I got it later. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do, I guess. I went and took a test and passed it and got a GED. I guess that means something. It didn't matter that I didn't have the money or the political influence. It didn't matter that I wasn't qualified in the world's eyes because God qualifies those whom he calls. He justifies us. He equips us. And he gives us the tools that we need to walk out his calling. He's not going to call you to something and then say, go ahead and figure this out. He's going to lead and guide you every step of the way. God gave me a chief encouragement officer along the way. My 
assistant is my CEO, Christy Kirkpatrick, and she came along with me because she knew that this was a part of God's plan. She and I have served in church together for more than a decade. And she was probably more shocked than I was when I said I was running for Congress. <laughs> but she knew that this was a part of God's plan and government was going to look a lot different when God started removing corrupt politicians and installing leaders and righteous men and women who are faith-filled, who are spirit-filled, who love Jesus, the Lord God Almighty. And that's what this is about. From day one, this has been a spiritual effort, a spiritual battle, a spiritual encounter every step of the way. Even today, I think that there was some work to try to prevent me from being here. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Womack, I, I understand that you have experience in bringing things back to life, so I would like you to come and lay hands on my transmission <laughs> later. <laughs> we'll just call those things that be not as though they were. That transmission is purring like a kitten. <laughs> Now, it's interesting, I was thinking today, how many of you have heard of Jen Tringell? Let's see who I'm talking to today. Okay, great, you have to read her book. Um, okay, so Jen Tringell is amazing, and she has this book called Jesus Calling. And when I first heard her speak, she was talking about going and having these meetings and how the enemy would get in the way and disrupt everything and prevent her from trying to be there whether it's delayed flights and canceled flights and lost luggage and wearing the same outfit for three days and no notes and no Bible, going to preach with no Bible. This woman was a part of my realization that God wants to be involved in the affairs of government. God cares about the affairs of man and government. And there are some unjust things that are taking place that God wants to make right. He holds the king's heart in his hand and he directs it whichever way he desires. But he's gonna use his church, he's gonna use his children to infiltrate these people because we understand the book of Isaiah says arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you. It said that darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness the people. How many of you are seeing that right now? There's so much ignorance in the world, and that's not to offend anyone, they just don't know. They just don't understand and they are deceived. And the problem with being deceived is it's very deceptive. <laughs> you don't even know that you're believing a lie. People are trading the truth for a lie. I serve in the United States House of Representatives and I've been on the House floor arguing that a boy is not a girl. I have these conversations with adults. Darkness will fill the earth and deep darkness the people. But how bright, how bright will your rising be? Because you shine so much brighter in the darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend. It cannot overcome your light. God needs you right now to be active in every area. In Jen Tremiel's book, Jesus Calling, she said a lot of Christians, what? Just calling? Just calling? Yes, Not Jesus? I mean, he does. Okay. <laughs> it's just called Calling. Maybe there's a second book. Maybe there's a sequel. <laughs> Je Jesus is calling you. <laughs> she says that a lot of Christians don't want to get involved with government. But there are important conversations being had at tables that you need to be seated at. I've seen it firsthand. I've been in these meetings that I never would have expected to have an invitation to. And I can tell you, they are all searching for an answer and you have the answers because the creator lives on the inside of you.
Now look at our founding fathers. Look at their faith that they had to create this country. I want, I, want to, I want to read from my notes just a little bit because there's some extraordinary things with our founding fathers and what they sacrificed. Now, in the 18th century, Americans were kind of tired of paying taxes to a government that wasn't listening to them. Sound familiar? <laughs> you know, and it, it, I mean, it wasn't anything like unreasonable, you know, like a, a, a one trillion dollar infrastructure bill or a $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation. Nothing like that, no. It, it was just a fee that may have looked like a tax. And they were kind of upset. <laughs> but they decided to do something about this. Five signers of the Declaration of Independence were captured by the British as traitors. And they were tortured before their death. Twelve of the signers had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons in the Revolutionary War. Another two had sons who were captured. Nine of the 56 fought and died from wounds or hardship in the Revolutionary War. So like I was saying, liberty, it comes at a cost. And our founding fathers understood that. When they signed the Declaration of independence, that was the ultimate act of faith. God said to declare the end from the beginning. Our founding fathers declared independence before there was any sign of freedom. Before they were free, they declared we are independent. These United States of America not only did they make that declaration daring the king, but they celebrated that freedom before they went out and fought the battle. God calls us to celebrate before we have won. He says the battle is his, the victory is yours. I'm going to turn over here to Exodus. I think I want to read 16. It might be 14. Maybe I won't read it. Maybe it left my Bible. <laughs> I'm going to find it. Okay, we're going to go to Exodus 14. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He will accomplish for you today. And jump down to 14. It says, the Lord will fight for you and shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Now I want to ask you all, what are you doing with what you already have? What are you doing with the revelation that you have already received? What are you saying? What are you speaking? Our founding fathers had this principle embedded within them. They declared the victory that they wanted and they went out and fought that because they knew that the Lord would fight with them and he would hold their peace. Now the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Church, I'm telling you all today, go forward. It's time we take what we know about the word of God and run with it. We don't need to sit back and ask God, why is Nancy Pelosi being so mean today? We need to take the word of God and the promises that he has provided for us, everything that pertains to life and godliness has been given to us and we need to go forward. God said to Moses, but lift up your rod. What's in your hand? What is in your hand and what are you doing with it? 
Are you going forward with it? Are you saying, well, maybe this isn't enough, it's just a stick. What am I supposed to do with this? Get a splinter? God said, lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. This is the faith that our founding fathers had. They declared the end from the beginning and they celebrated that victory because they knew the battle was the Lord's and they would have that victory. And when they had won 11 years later and they were crafting the Constitution, the United States Constitution, they knew better than to reimpose tyranny and oppression upon themselves. They had just fought a brutal battle to be delivered and freed from that. And they wanted a government that was strong enough to protect its people from that tyranny and oppression, both domestically and foreign, but not so strong that it would ever oppose tyranny on itself. There's some things that we need to get in check with our government right now. When we have wide open borders that I have seen firsthand, I have made three trips to the southern border and I have seen people illegally crossing our southern border, our poorest wide open border that Biden halted construction on day one of his administration. And don't think he did it to save you any money. Oh no, those contracts are still out there and you are still paying for a wall that is not being built. I've been there and I've seen the unaccompanied minors who are used as decoys by the cartel. They understand our hearts of compassion and that we are going to take care of these children as we ought to. We are not going to leave children alone and unattended to. So the cartel flood unaccompanied minors to the border patrol agents and then a mile east and a mile west of them is where all of the criminal aliens are coming through with enough fentanyl to kill every American at least five times over by now. Smuggling in drugs, human smuggling. I've seen the rape trees that are there as a trophy with women's undergarments hanging from them. I have seen the empty packages in 12-year-old girls' backpacks of Plan B pills because their mothers expect them to be sexually assaulted. So they send them on this journey with a Plan B pill. I have seen farmers and ranchers have their properties destroyed, their homes broken into. I've talked to border patrol agents who want to secure the border, who want to be able to do their job and not change diapers and, and manage a facility that's over 1,700% over capacity. Now, there was a time just recently, if your church was just 1% over capacity, government would do something about it. Real quick, too. I've talked to the Border Patrol agents about COVID-19. And I said, how many people are coming through that you're processing and are testing positive for COVID? They said, well, we're not testing them. Well, officer, why? Why, why wouldn't you be testing them? You know, we're, we're all, we're going through a pandemic here. You know, everyone's being extra cautious. We cannot afford to quarantine the amount of people who would test positive. I've seen the buses that have a sign in the window that says this bus is on a 15 minute loop. They get filled up, taken to nearby hotels where the governments have no bid contracts. And then they come back and pick up more. I've been in the McAllen, Texas airport, where I've seen dozens of groups of people with manila envelopes. And in these manila envelopes is a notice to appear. And this notice to appear gives them legal standing to remain in the United States of America. Why is this important to Colorado? Well, your dear governor, has declared Colorado, first of all, a sanctuary state. 
Christy, can I have my phone? I want to read something to them. And recently, the Col thank you, the Colorado State Legislature, they created a new department. It's called the Department of New Americans. Now, if you go to the website, it says, who are New Americans? New Americans are Coloradans who arrived in the U.S. as immigrants or their children. This population includes refugees, asylees, special immigrant visa holders, victims of trafficking, DACA recipients, and all other immigrants and aspiring citizens seeking opportunity, safety, and or reunification of family. So any dang person you want, anyone, falls into this category and they are receiving benefits from your tax dollars. I haven't seen the governor come out and help the businesses that were shut down, the churches that were shut down, the children who have been bound and muzzled in schools. No, the American people have been punished this entire time. And I'm gonna tell you right now why I don't give a darn about mask mandates. Despite what the resident president in the White House says, <laughs> it has always been about freedom and personal choice. I don't give a darn about mask mandates because the people who mandate them don't give a darn about mask mandates. I have seen Nancy Pelosi in person break her own mandates the day she reinstitutes them. The, way, the day she reissues them. I've seen AOC sit on the Capitol steps in a group without social distancing, but then somebody says, oh, we want to take a picture. Oh, a picture? Great, let's put on our masks. So then she puts on her mask. Oh, the picture's done? Great, let's take it off. How you doing, girl? They don't care about the mask mandates. They care about the optics. That's why members of Congress are fined $500 for the first offense for not wearing their mask in the House chambers, and $2,500 every time thereafter. Now, this might sound like they're taking this really serious at the Capitol, but it's only in the rooms where the C-SPAN cameras are rolling. We don't get fined anywhere else, just where the C-SPAN cameras are rolling, because this is political theater. If these people really cared about what's going on, they wouldn't be punishing business owners, our children, our churches, everyone in America. They wouldn't be mandating vaccines. They would allow you to make that choice between you and your doctor. One of the most trusted relationships that we have. And if they were really serious about this virus, they would shut down the southern border and stop letting 1.5 million illegal immigrants pour in unvaccinated. We saw just this week Jin Psaki get questioned about the vaccine mandates and said, but isn't it true that the migrants coming across the border illegally are not required to be vaccinated? And she said, correct, next question. <laughs> Unfortunately, this isn't the only thing that we need to put a check on in our government right now. I have seen such a radical swing this year. I was questioned my entire campaign if I was going to work with my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. I said, there's no table I won't sit at. There's no conversation I won't have. I will not compromise my principles, but I will work for the better of our communities. That is unfortunately not the same for my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. Everything has been completely extreme and fast-tracked 
We have committees that we're assigned to, and oftentimes the bills that our committees have jurisdiction over are completely bypassed in the committee. I serve on the budget committee. Do you think that the budget committee had any sort of discussion in the committee about the first $1.9 trillion budget reconciliation? No, it's kind of in the name. It's a budget reconciliation. You think it would go to the budget committee. No, it went straight to the House floor. Straight to the floor for a vote. I serve in the Natural Resource Committee because I promised that I would be a strong voice for Colorado. I promised I would fight for what we believe in. I promised I would secure your rights because that is the proper role of government, not to keep you healthy. If it was, heart disease would not be the leading cause of death in America. If safety was the proper role of government, I think cars should be banned. <laughs> the proper role of government is to keep you free. Yeah. I was frustrated at politicians not securing our rights, but giving our rights away like they belong to politicians to begin with. It's very clear in the Constitution, which says this is self-evident, which means you should not have to have anyone explain it to you because it's self-evident that these rights come from God and government is there, it's instituted to secure those rights. And we, the governed, give consent to be governed. This is, a, this is the first self-governing nation we should keep it that way. Amen. A government for, of, and by the people. Now, unfortunately, the border, the mandates, this isn't as bad as it gets. What we've seen from the dismal withdrawal in Afghanistan has been shameful, Disgusting, it's even made me cuss. <laughs> I don't cuss. <laughs> when I have to pull over on the side of the road to take a call with a grieving mother whose son was just killed in Afghanistan, kind of upsets me. Downright makes me mad. This should not have happened. And if we had a strong leader in the White House, it would not have happened. but stand for those families who have lost their sons, who lost their daughter unnecessarily. That should not have happened. Our State Department from the beginning has been the number one hindrance in getting Americans home. We have had civilians accomplish more in getting Americans home. We have, had, we have had members of Congress go on secret rogue missions to get families out of there and back home because the State Department would not work with them. Right now, there are American planes trying to get people home. And yesterday, my team and I spent the day calling the State Department. Oh yeah, we've heard of this. Oh yeah, well, we'll see what we can do. Maybe we could do something. Listen, Deputy Secretary. It's a pretty mighty title there. It sounds like you have some sort of authority. Pakistan and Afghanistan have already given us permission. What the heck is America waiting on?
When we see Biden address the nation and the world and shows more contempt and aggravation and aggression towards unvaccinated Americans than he has terrorists, we have a problem. And that's why I have articles of impeachment to impeach Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. We are sons and daughters of revolutionaries. They went to battle for a lot less. They took a stand for a lot less. And it's time we get involved. I need you involved at every local level. I need you speaking up. I need the world to hear your voice. You know the word of God, and you know that there is power in your words, that the world was framed by words. to use your voice and speak. What if Jesus showed up today and said, from this point forward, everything you say, you will have it. He said it. That's exactly what he said to us. So what are we saying? Are we gonna sit and agree with the enemy? Are we going to agree with what the enemy is doing? Are we gonna sit back and complain and murmur? Are we gonna speak life into this nation? Are we going to speak victory? Are we going to declare that God re removes these unrighteous politicians, these corrupt, crooked politicians, and installs righteous men and women of God? You have the God kind of faith, and that faith speaks. That faith speaks to mountains, those impossible, immovable situations. And I think there's some mountains that need to hear your voice. These mountains don't need to hear your pastor's voice or the, the preachers on TV, God bless them. Thank you for them. But it's time the church speaks up. The church has relinquished too much authority to government. We should not be taking orders by the government, from the government. The government needs to be looking at the church and saying, how do we do this effectively? When we get back to Washington, D.C., I am making sure that there is a motion to vacate the chair and remove Nancy Pelosi as speaker. I did not come to Congress to be a part of Republican clubs. I did not go to Washington, D.C. to be wined and dined and eat fancy steak. I can eat better beef in Colorado. And I am not sitting around and waiting for the next election and maybe we'll have the majority and then we could do something. No, I am doing something now. Work, word works, and even the enemy knows it. Look at what the Democrats are doing. They are putting what God has told us to do into practice. Y'all can have a seat. <laughs> God said that we have a new identity. We are new creatures. That's God's plan for us to be completely made new, to be something that we were not born as. And look at how the enemy has perverted that. 
We are new creations in Christ. That doesn't mean we get to swap from boy to girl or nothing or any of the 82 other genders, but they understand the principles of the word of God and they are using it against his will, against what he intended it for. And they understand that words have creative power. Why do you think it's so frustrating when we watch the news and we say, how can they say that? How can they just keep saying that? That's not true. When we hear a, a, a call to the nation saying, we've created the best economy ever. <laughs> Look at all the job creations just this year. Well, last I checked, you know, forcing someone out of a job and then letting them go back to it isn't really job creation. <clears throat> but they say it, they confess it, they declare it, and then people start to believe it. People grab a hold of that because that's what they hear over and over and over. If you don't listen to us, you'll get sick and die over and over. When God says, if you'll just listen to me, you'll have life. Amen. So what are we saying? What are we speaking? What are we speaking over our nations? It's really easy to curse what's happening right now. It's really easy to exalt the bad that is happening right now. And there are people who need to expose it so we understand the truth. I have no problem exposing what's going on in Congress because you're not gonna hear everything that's going on there. You're not gonna hear how there's no regular order. You're not gonna hear how Nancy Pelosi just had a $200 million earmark for a golf course and some hotels in her district. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of an elite place and they just went through a pandemic and so they really need it. Yeah, we debated this in the Natural Resource Committee. Praise the Lord. So I have, I have an amendment to say, hey, this $200 million, let's, let's not put it towards a fancy golf course and hotels and maybe do something more effective for the people. And one of my colleagues from the other side of the aisle, from Tennessee, he said, well now, Speaker Pelosi, she works really hard. <laughs> She works, she works really hard. And yeah, speaker, speaker of the House, leadership, maybe they get a little more in a bill for their districts. But Nancy Pelosi deserves it. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, no member of Congress, not any of the 435 members of Congress deserve anything. You, the people, deserve everything. We have articles of impeachment for Blinken, Secretary Austin, Mayor uh, Mayorkas. All of these people have failed at their jobs. They have failed the American people. And we will do what we can to expose, to articulate to you what is happening but I need you to take that information and filter it through the word of God and say, God, what do you see for America? Because I see a shining city on a hill. I see a nation filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. I see a nation of people full of agape love, unconditional love filled with the spirit of God. I see other countries looking to America and saying, surely their God has done great and mighty things for them. It's really important that we put a watch over our mouth. I travel to a lot of areas where I'm not really welcomed. The third district, it's right now as stands in R plus six district. So 
Republicans aren't really that much in the majority. And we have a lot of these high mountain ski resort towns. And I'm not exactly their favorite person. But my assistant and I, we go through these towns and sometimes we catch ourselves getting angry. We catch ourselves speaking against them. And one night, my assistant said, we have to stop this. What are we saying about these people? God is bringing us into these counties, into these communities, and we need to be bringing life into these areas. We need to be speaking God's word when we come in here. God said he'll give us the heathens. So call them a heathen if you want. He said they're part of your inheritance. So you might as well make friends with them. Say, come on over. Water's nice over here. He said, everywhere the sole of your foot treads, you will possess it. We got 50,000 miles on just one car. There's a whole lot of land that God intends for his people to possess. The harvest is great. The laborers are few. If you don't have a good church, I want you to find one. But when you're there, I want you to know that that's not the end of it. You go to church to be charged up, to be edified, to be encouraged, to learn the word of God. But then you're sent out. You are sent out into the world. And church doesn't stop outside of those doors. The laborers are outside of the church because the harvest is outside of the church. We were talking today and this really ministered to me. When that harvest starts coming in, I want you guys to recognize it and you will because it's going to look different. It's going to look different than the church has looked. A lot of people have a religious mindset and think that Christians look a certain way. Christians act a certain way. Well, they do once they're saved. But Paul was Saul before he was saved. And God uses the least likely. God has an incredible habit of working with some real losers and bringing them to greatness. Rahab the prostitute is in the lineage of Jesus, I'm just saying. So when you see people, and this is what we were talking about today, I, I'm, so, I'm so proud to have someone with me that we could discuss the word of God on a, on a regular basis, and, and we, can, we can build each other up. When God calls you to something, he calls people alongside of you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna step, step over just a little bit on this. So God has called us to be patient, right? But that's with circumstances. When you hear about patience, God's talking about circumstances. He's also called you to be long-suffering, and that's not with circumstances. That's with people. Isn't it interesting he uses that word? But God's going to call people alongside of you, so watch for that so you could recognize it when these people come alongside of you. I have my chief of staff Jeff Small here with me today from Washington, D.C. And this is one of the men that God has called alongside of me in this time. <laughs> Jeff, stand up. <laughs> hey, Jeff, I was just talking about God working with losers. I'm not talking about you. You're not a loser. <laughs> not you. <laughs> So people have this idea of what you're supposed to look like when you come into church. Some people have done some very radical and extreme things. When you see the tattoos, sometimes all over their face, their neck, their bodies, their piercings, they are craving something radical. It's just directed the wrong way. They are craving the supernatural. And when they get a hold of God, like God wants to get a hold of them, they are going to be so radical and extreme for the things of God that no devil, no demon, no one is getting in their way from serving God. So when 
the church starts to look a little radical, when the church starts to look a little different, when you have packs of cigarettes and bottles of alcohol, maybe some pipes in Colorado, on the altar, I want you all to rejoice because all of heaven is rejoicing for the church that is going to look unlike anything we've seen before. When you see someone like that, know they just need one word from heaven to change that direction and be completely radical for God. Now, I have a lot of hope for our nation. I have a lot of hope, first of all, because I've read the end of the book and we win. But there are good people. How much time do I have? One minute? Yes. Praise the Lord. I just noticed I was counting down. My pastor doesn't look at the clocks anyway, I, it, either. I just get that from him, I guess. In, in Congress, the, one of the most surprising things that I encountered was how many good men and women there are. How many people who are there for the right reasons, who love their country, who love the people who sent them there, and above all, love God. I am a proud member of the Freedom Caucus, and hopefully the next time I see you, I'll say I'm a board member of the Freedom Caucus. We, we, have, we have an election in October, so pray for me. <laughs> Favor. So the Freedom Caucus, this is a group of conservatives who actually debate the constitutionality of everything that we do. Not just the bills that we vote on, but the procedures that take place, the rules that we follow and watch for so we can have a tool in the minority against the majority. And sometimes these debates get really heated and then someone will say, I think we've spoke enough on our own accord. It's time to seek God and his wisdom in this. Amen. And we will all pray and ask for God to show us what's right. It's an incredible group and I am so honored to be with them because you have to be around strong people or DC will suck you in. There are people who stay in DC and don't come back home to their districts. How can you ever represent 750,000 people without coming back to them and talking with them and hearing from them? But they get in this DC bubble and they think that that's all that matters and these are the voices that matters. It's because of the Freedom Caucus that I understand rules and procedures unlike I would just being a regular freshman member of Congress. I started noticing that we have suspension bills. And these suspension bills will throw five, 15, 30 bills in one. Nobody really reads them. It's usually not enough time because we don't know what's going to be in the suspension bills until we're, the day we're voting on them. And then the chair will say, by unanimous consent, this passes. And then all of them pass. And all of us have a yes vote to all of these bills. So millions and millions of dollars being spent. Crazy, radical bills being passed. Sometimes it's just a post office naming. But they sneak in other things, too. So I said, how do we stop this? And they said, someone has to be on the floor to object. So I said, well, I could do that. <laughs> mom of four boys, I could object to a lot of things. <laughs> and so now when they say by unanimous consent, you say objection. And they say, okay, what's your objection? I want a voice vote. Okay. I know the eyes have it. It's going to pass anyway, lady. Great. Now I demand a roll call vote because I want every member of Congress to put their name to what they're voting for. We are literally sent to vote on your behalf and they found a way around that to where they don't have to put their name to it. But I want you to be able to look at my record. I want you to be able to see what I voted. And if there's something that you don't understand the vote, ask me. 
I'm happy to tell you. Some of it's simply because it didn't go through committee and the proper process. How can I vote on something when you didn't even allow us to offer amendments to it? How can I vote yes for something when we haven't even had an attempt to debate this? How can I just see it for the first time and put my name as a solid yes to this? And I'm sure we'll have those struggles in the majority too. <laughs> Unfortunately. But I want you all, I'll close with this, I want you all to be praying for leadership in our nation on both sides. Because we need serious wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God in Washington, D.C. And even these people who oppose us and are doing these things, if they truly have a revelation of the knowledge of the love of God, a true revelation, a true insight to God's love, to God's plan, well, they just got saved. No one can experience that love and not turn to Jesus and say, forgive me, I've done it all wrong. I've done things my way and I wanna do things your way. We have a lot of battles ahead of us, but God is with us every step of the way. I do believe we will have the majority in 2022. Right now I have I don't know, very seven, eight, nine, ten Democrats running against me in Colorado's third district. But it does not matter what promises they make for rural Colorado, for our agriculture, our ranchers, our farmers, our water, our forests. It doesn't really matter because I know if a Democrat wins this seat, they don't work for Colorado. They work for Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. I see it every day. So no matter how they try to draw the maps, you know, they tried to give. They try to give us bolder. They try, they try to do all these extreme things to, it's an independent commission, folks. Don't worry, there's no partisanship. Don't worry. It doesn't matter which Democrat comes out of their primary successfully. It doesn't matter how they draw the maps. I am going to win my seat in Colorado's third district and Nancy Pelosi will have the gavel removed from her hands. you all. Thank you so much, Pastor Womack. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. God bless America. Thank you. That's awesome. You. Can you stay up here a second? Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. Isn't this great? Well, the scripture says we're supposed to pray for all of those in authority. So let's play, pray for Lauren. And then Lauren, after we pray for you, I would like you to lead us Lord. in prayer for our government and for this nation because you have an inroad into it that most of us don't. Yes, sir. Yes. So Father, all of us just agree right now and we pray for Lauren. Thank you, Father, for speaking to her, for calling her, for helping her to win, putting her in a position. Thank you that she is a thorn in the flesh of those who are trying to destroy this nation. And Father, we ask you for supernatural boldness, that she would have no fear of men, that she would not fear anyone but you. And Father, I believe that as she stands, that you anoint her, that you give her words to speak that are so powerful that it just destroys all of the lies, the deception and the things that are going on. We thank you for her and we lay hands on her. I do this and all of us are in agreement and we believe that you are anointing her and Father using her. We believe that she will be on the board of that commission. We thank you and we thank you that you help her to be reelected and all of these attempts, Father, that are, are coming against her. We just speak that they come to nothing. We condemn those things and we thank you for blessing and exalting Lauren in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And you pray for our government, would you? Yes, yes, yes. Father God, what an honor. What an honor it is to stand here with your people. Oh, we come to you boldly by the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that 
that you are great, you are matchless, you are majestic, you are mighty. Father God, you are great and greatly to be praised. God, before all, I thank you for the call that you have put on so many people here. God, you know the sacrifices that have been made by the men and women who have served in our military. Father God, you know their hearts, their servants' heart, their heart of freedom, their desire for liberty, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, that those men and women that have lost their lives in the name of freedom, the 13 that were just lost in Afghanistan, God, you know exactly what those parents are feeling. Because God, you know what it's like to lose a son. Jesus, thank you for coming here. Thank you, Jesus, for coming here and showing us the way, the showing us to how to walk in the kingdom of God. Thank you for showing us how to be co-heirs, joint heirs with you, Jesus, in this newness of life. Thank you for taking all of the authority, for going to hell and capturing that. Jesus, your, your sacrifice, your way to the cross was not in vain. You bore our sickness and our pain. By the stripes on your back, we were healed. And if we were healed, then we are healed. And 10,000, 1,000 may fall at our left side and 10,000 at our right. But God, nothing shall by any means hurt us because Jesus has paid the price for that healing. And Jesus, on the cross, you said it was finished. You went to hell in our place and you took back that authority to give it to us. That authority belongs to us. And you didn't just leave us ignorant in that authority, but you sent us the helper. Holy Spirit, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for showing us how to use this authority. Thank you for showing us where we need to be and, and giving us words to speak. Even when we don't know what to pray for, you pray for us. You help us in every sense. There's nothing that's been left out. And right now we lift up our government. We lift up this nation. We lift up the people of America. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this nation. This is a righteous nation in Jesus' name. God, you will be glorified here in this place. God, you will be glorified in all 50 state capitals. I plead the blood of Jesus over those state legislatures, over the governors. God, convict their hearts. Amen. Convict their hearts towards freedom and liberty to trust their people to do the right thing. Amen. We don't have a king in America, but we do serve the king. Jesus, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and that is why we magnify you and we ask you to influence these places, influence our school boards now. Holy Amen. Spirit, move in those places. Rise up the moms who need to be involved in those positions. Give them words to speak. Grace them for this time. Give them the boldness, Father God, that they need. Holy Spirit, anoint them. God, our children's future depend on it. Our children's faith in you depends on it. There's more power and more authority in the school board than the average person understands. God, reveal to us the importance of these positions, the importance to have godly people in every position of government. This is spiritual. This is godly. And we need to be a part of this. God, I plead the blood of Jesus over the United States Capitol building. I plead the blood of Jesus over the White House and over the Pentagon. God, the Pentagon is so important and so vital. And there has been evil that has been allowed to creep in and weaken our military. God, we deserve to have a military so strong that we never have to use it. Amen. God, bless those men and women and reveal to these generals the great nation that they have been called to serve. 
unwoke these generals, God. Give them a revelation of what they are truly called to do, the nation they are called to serve, the people they are called to defend. And God in the White House, we need you moving. I've been in there and I've prayed. Holy Spirit, I've welcomed you in there and I know that you are moving in that place. I know that your presence is there. I know that there are angels posted. They are on assignment and they have not been released of that assignment so I know that they are there working on behalf of you, God on behalf of the will of your people. God, I just thank you that there is a boldness, that there is a stirring in your people to rise up, to speak up in the face of the enemy. Give them that spirit of faith, God, to step out and speak out, even if they don't feel qualified, God. It's not about feelings. It's about what you have put on the inside of us those gifts and callings that you're not sorry for, that you're not taking away. They're for a purpose and an appointed time, and I believe the time is now. God, I've been in the House chambers and the Senate chambers pleading the blood over each and every seat, every row in that building, God, and I have felt your presence in that place, and I know that you are working. God, wake your people up. Wake your people up now. God, we're crying out to you to shake this nation and everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But God, we are deeply rooted in you. We are deeply planted in you, in your word. This nation will not fail because Amen. you have blessed this nation and your hand is over us. God, we just give you glory. We give you glory and honor. You are deserving of it. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Let's praise God for glory a sister God. in the Lord being in the <laughs> Congress. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I heard this from Richard and I just asked her, and I just asked her, and we aren't able to give her an honorarium. So uh, I asked Lauren if we were able to give her an honorarium and she said no, and Richard had already told me that. But uh, I've already read, I'm, uh, Jamie and I have contributed to her reelection. Yes, thank you. And uh, I've read that they've got some heavy hitters coming in. A lot of the Democrats are pouring a tremendous amount of money into yes. trying to silence this woman. And so what I'd like to ask you to do, how could they contribute if they want to be a part of your deal? Laurenforfreedom.com. All right, so Lauren for Freedom. Because that's what this is all about, freedom. And you know, we have over a thousand people here and if everybody gave 20 bucks, that'd be a good honorary. Yes. And if you could give more, that'd be great. But why don't uh, we, you just do that on your own, laurenforfreedom.com and let's support her and help her. She's on the lines fighting for us and we need to be a part of what she's doing. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you very Thank much. You. God you. bless you. This is such a blessing and an honor. Thank you. Okay. Praise the Lord. You, uh, Matt will take care of you. Hadn't this been awesome? Praise God. I tell you what, I believe that the Lord has uh, lit a fire. I know some of us already had a fire lit, but at the very least it's fanned the flame and we are going to see some awesome, awesome things happen. So uh, Richard, do you have anything you want to do to close this out? Let me just once again thank Richard and his team. They are the ones that put all of this together. And you did a great, great job. Thank you, Andrew. Well, that's high praise right there. <laughs> praise God. How many of y'all are just so glad you came to this? Amen. 100% vote. Unanimous. Praise the Lord. Well, I just want to say thank you for coming. Uh, and as you leave today, uh, be sure to check out again our resources area. And if you did order DVDs, USBs, or, or uh, any of that stuff, uh, be, be sure to pick those up at the table on your way out. Check out our booths, our exhibitors, and all of that. And uh, God bless you guys. Stand for truth now. We love you.
We will not be shaken, praise God.